Hi friends, how are we? Welcome back to my channel, Emily here, home of the Forever Theater Kid. Today, we are going to do a little cleany clean of my apartment. It is Sunday, I've had a very long week of doing a lot of computer work and I've been on my phone like all week and I just kind of wanted to take today to clean my apartment and to just kind of like keep my face off of the screen, just kind of like you know, just kind of like decompress through cleaning. Last time I did like a deep clean of my apartment, I was like, oh, the whole time I was like, oh, I should have filmed it. So I'm gonna film it today. It's probably mostly gonna be montage, but I was thinking maybe we'll do some voiceover and just talk about theater and things that we're missing and music that we're listening to and podcasts that we're listening to. So it's gonna be you watching me clean all day but also you're just gonna hear me talk about random things that have been giving me some joy lately. So yeah, so if you are interested in this little clean with me and other videos of the like lifestyle, especially what lifestyle of an actor is like during quarantine, and then also some advice on actor life and performance life, all the things in between, make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and um, also take a break from social media yourself when you need it because it's important. Our videos will always be there, hopefully. <laughs> Our posts are gonna be there, but if you need a break from social media, take a break. Even if it's just a day, take a day away from your phone. I'm really gonna try to do that. I'm downloading a podcast right now. Watch Carrie Dayton, like, religiously. I love her, I think we'd be wonderful friends. For my parasocial relationship with her, I am learning so much about body neutrality and like loving myself and looking back on old videos and I'm like, oh, Emmy shouldn't be saying that. I just watch her videos and I kind of feel inspired and feel like I'm learning every single time. And yeah, she mentioned a podcast called The Missionary and I will tell you all about it. All right, so let's just start to clean with me. I'm gonna show you what my apartment looks like right now. It's not that bad. I tend to clean it, like I tend to tidy it every night before I go to sleep because I hate, hate Hate, hate, hate waking up to a messy space in the morning. Just, it completely throws me off and I feel like I can't start my day until I clean it. I just like to start with a clean slate, put everything back into its home. There's so much dog hair. Like, there's so much dog hair. My desk area and work area is pretty good. I might just like organize these drawers a tiny bit. I don't have any more like little containers to put things in. They're actually pretty good because I just moved this over. This is pretty organized. That's, that's pretty much okay. This area is pretty good too. It's not the worst, just a little tidying. It's mainly, I mainly really have to dust like everywhere. I hate dusting, it's so annoying to me but it really has to be done. Uh, these are all pretty organized so I really don't have to do anything. It's just dusting and wiping down surfaces. Main place I'm going to be, I'm, I'm gonna be in the kitchen wiping down the cabinets. We have a bit of a mouse situation again. It's because we have trash, like our trash that our entire building and the business below us have. We throw all of our trash out in the same spot. And there are some people that if the first trash container is full, they just go, oh, I'm just gonna put it on the ground. And the mice don't really have restaurant food to eat anymore, so they're wow. eating, uh, right, Daisy? I keep waking up and seeing little pieces of mouse. Everywhere. What's annoying about mice is that it doesn't matter how clean your place is. If they're gonna find a way in, they're gonna find a way in. They're coming in through the radiators in the bathroom. And there's no way for us to cover up those holes. There's no way. If you have any ideas on how to cover up holes in a radiator that's not gonna make my apartment like burn to the ground, please tell me. I'd be so greatly appreciated. Put dishes away, clean off dishes, clean off, take off the, take off, what are these labels? This is a ginger beer that's really yummy, we get it at Target. If you like ginger ale but just want a little switch up, ginger beer is really, really nice, non-alcoholic, and it's just got like a nice like crisp taste to it. Also, I love the amber jars because amber jars are so like in right now. So if you can use bottles of things that you're already using or buying like kombucha or ginger beer, use that. And this is what I use to, propagate my plants in, and my plants are thriving. So yeah, we're getting a little bit of mouse poop. Gotta clean you up. This just feels like it's never clean. Gotta wipe down cabinets. Most, I'm most likely gonna try to get, we just have one of those like, dun. 
hot mess. So I'm gonna wipe that down, clean that off, maybe do the freezer, because the freezer itself is also gross. Up there is pretty gross. Hi, air fryer, how are you? Gonna use you tonight. And then the last pot spot, well no, we're gonna do the bathroom too. This just needs to be like tidied a bit, wiped, cabinets wiped down because I think the mouse is, mice have also gotten in here near Daisy's food. Yeah, just vacuum it out, tidy it up a bit. That's like all of our COVID like storage of crap. Nothing's gonna really change, it's all just gonna like be cleaner. So I'm very domestic today. And then we're just gonna do a clean down of the bathroom. Nothing in the bathroom really needs to change, just needs to be wiped down, vacuumed, just cleaned. We're gonna like, I don't think we're gonna wipe down woodwork, we're gonna dust everything, but like all of this stuff, I've been doing clay, working with clay, like I need this, these are going on the wall. I don't know what my upstairs neighbors are doing, they're out, out of their mind. I made that like flamingo, so I made a little shell. Just creative things, all right. Let's get started. I'm going to make a list because that's the easiest way because I don't know about you, but when I clean, I kind of start somewhere and then it goes all over the place and then I'm like, wait, what was the last thing I was doing? So let's get cleaning. Hey y'all, how we doing? How's everyone doing out there? I'm not talking directly to the camera. I'm talking right at my microphone so my camera's just like slightly off to the side, but I said I was gonna do a voiceover in this video, and I am, obviously. But, I don't know. I'm just, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time sitting down and recording this because everything I'm creating feels a little insignificant, not gonna lie. Um, the world is burning. <laughs> so, it's, it's tough to, to make content that you feel doesn't have any relevancy and you feel isn't making an impact on people. Um, but that's my own thing, right? That's my own brain. I gotta get over that myself. So if anything, I just hope that this, uh, as of right now, 35 minute video can, I don't wanna say help you escape. I don't wanna say, uh, help you forget about what's going on. If it does and that's helpful, great. I hope that it helps you take time to just recharge. I know I like watching these clean with me and decorate with me and renovate and just kind of things that like you get to like watch someone smash a wall, you know? It like, doesn't that sound nice just to like see someone take a mallet and just smash the wall? Or like rip out a sink. I don't know. It's very cathartic because I'm like, oh, that would be nice right now. Because we're living in some really tough times. It's tough. It's frustrating. It's angering. It's infuriating. It's sad. It's lonely. It's rough. 2020 is not over yet. There's still a lot of hope and there's still a lot of light at the end of the tunnel, but it's tough. It's tough. And if this video, among the other long content videos, long form content videos that I've been creating for you this quarantine, I hope it just gives you some time to recharge and just get through it. Because that's all we're all trying to do right now. We're all just trying to get through it and that's okay. You can just get through it. You can form resilience to it. You can find positivity. You can find joy. You can find gratitude. I'm learning more and more about that every day as I'm working on myself and doing kind of my own type of self-work and unlearning and relearning and listening. I miss theater a lot. I miss it so much. It's also hard to talk about theater because I feel like I haven't done it in a long time. But it's my biggest passion in life. It's my biggest joy. It's my biggest love. I mean, it's been with me since I was a little girl, right? And our community's really hurting. 
And there's a lot of change that needs to be done. Oh, a lot of change. And I hope a lot of change happens from this time. If anything, I hope quarantine and the people who are at the top of so many industries, especially the arts industry that is shut the hell down, are reflecting and actively making changes to their protocols, to their um, upper creative teams, bringing in more equity and diversity and creating spaces where all their performers, no matter what they look like, but especially their BIPOC community are comfortable and feel safe in their rooms so that they can really do their jobs great. Because, oh my gosh, the talent, the talent, the talent, the talent in so many people that are afraid to be in the room because they don't feel safe. You know, that's something that so many people like myself, like um, not BIPOC people like myself, I'm white, um, will never feel. And I've just been reflecting on that a lot. And I think that's why, like, I got so invested in this clean with me. Like, I just wanted to clean everything because cleaning for me is, is a really good time to think. It's a really good time to reflect. And... Although I can't do a renovation where I'm hammering out the walls, I can scrub the hell out of the bathtub, right? Oh, my propagated plants. I love them so much. They're giving me so much joy in this quarantine. So yeah, so let's talk a little theater. Um, I went into New York the like a couple days ago just to take, because I was saying to Gabe, I was saying, you know, nobody is around. And I've always wanted to take pictures in front of marquees, especially marquees that I really want to be in right now. Um, let's take some pictures in front of marquees because whenever you try to do that before a show, there's so many people. And not only just people going into the show, but like passersby, tourists and all that. So that was crazy, right? We just We just drove in and found a parking spot and started to take some pictures and it was so quiet and it was nice in some respects but it was also really weird it just felt like that buzzing energy that is the Times Square Broadway theater central just like it wasn't a buzz it's like you couldn't feel it and it just broke my heart. It, it just made me sad. I just wanted to be able to open up the doors or see, or just see like a random, you know, celebrity that was working a show, like just going past me. Like I've seen so many times where they're just going to work, you know, they're just going to their job. Um, I miss that. I'm gonna really miss that during the holiday season if I go into the city at all. It's just sad. <laughs> I don't want this video to be sad, but you know, I'm very, I'm trying to be really reflective lately. So I just kind of feel like I'm always in this space, which is okay. I kind of always feel like I'm like thinking about very meta, bigger picture type things right now. Um, not always doing it well, needing to be corrected quite a bit. And that's totally cool. But, um, but yeah, I feel like I'm very reflective lately. So if this video is just a huge dream of consciousness, know that it is. And uh, also that <laughs> I'm just out here just trying my best. So the podcast I was listening to is called The Missionary, and I listen to it on Apple Podcasts. I'm sure you can listen to it anywhere. Um, I don't really want to get into the whole thing. It was very good. It took up the entire time of me listening, of me cleaning. So thank you, Terry, Carrie Dayton, for that suggestion. But it was just a documentary. It was just, or it was just a story that made me very mad. So I don't really want to get into it, but. It was very good. So if you like documentary type styled, um, I wouldn't call it true crime, but it is true crime. Um, 
No, it's absolutely true. It's like true crime documentary style podcast that will make you want to throw your phone against the wall. Mouse poop. <laughs> Gross. I love podcasts. I really do. Doesn't it just feel like when you're listening to a podcast that your friends are just there with you, like chatting, and you're just like, yep, you keep talking. I'm just going to do the dishes while you're doing so. That's also what YouTube feels like for me. Just hanging out with my buds. I have so many new people that I'm watching, too, on, on YouTube. Um, my favorite, absolute favorite, Evelyn from the Internet. Is it Internets? Yeah. Evelyn from the Internets. Oh, my gosh. I, I realize why... I love her storytelling and her editing and everything that goes into her, the production of her videos. She's a theater kid. She talked about like being a theater kid in school and being in drama class. I was like, oh, that's why I love you so much. We speak the exact same language. So if you want to watch some like stellar content, go check out Evelyn of the, Evelyn from the internets. Just really really funny and really really smart and and really really good content like I am so curious how long it takes her to edit her videos because I know how long it takes me to edit and I do not have the quality that she has so chef's kiss mwah, love her stuff and it's also like I'm just I'm waiting on what's that word bated breath whenever um <laughs> Whenever I'm waiting for her new content to come out, I'm like, oh, just come out, just come out, just come out. Along the same lines of they kind of have similar, I kind of want to say similar humor styles, but his is a lot more dry. Jarvis Johnson is, a co I would say he's a commentator, um, a commentator, YouTuber, and he just delves deep into problematic things that are on the internet and also, um just pop culture and what's happening and really what's up to date in in the news cycle in terms of pop culture news I would say for the most part and I don't know I just really I really really um, gel I really really mesh with his style of humor and sarcasm and I'm like yeah I'm with you I am with you that's true everything you're saying is true and maybe <laughs> Maybe it's because the humor especially, I'm just like, that's how I feel right now. I get it. That's my kind of humor. I like that. And then also, just for some straight up, like, laughing, belly, gut, laughing, for some comedy, but commentary, internet love, is Mac Does It. I don't know how I've never heard of Mac before the past couple months, because he's got over maybe two or three million subscribers at this point, but, and he was on BuzzFeed. Uh, or at least wrote for him, wrote for them, and oh my gosh. Again, the editing. I don't know how long it must take him to edit his videos. There are so many intricate things that he does in his editing, but he makes me laugh so, so hard. I can't. Also a theater kid, although he probably doesn't really like do it anymore or pay attention to it anymore. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know his life. I'm just like, this is why I love the internet because I keep finding my theater people, even though they might not be doing theater anymore. Like they're forever theater kids in my eyes and I just really enjoy their content. I think you will too. So I'll leave them all down below. It has cleaned out the closet for me. So I'm going to wipe it down and put everything back in. I realized I was like, oh, I didn't get a shot of it really before. So we're just gonna wipe it down, vacuum it, because there's mouse poop in here. And then, um, oh my gosh, there's so much mouse poop! I think I found a hole that they're coming in through. Disgusting. Ice were coming in, so we filled it with foam. Y'all, I'm sorry if y'all are against that, because Gabe just told me right now that it probably no mouse will probably survive if it comes in contact with them. So if you're against it, I'm sorry, but we're getting desperate over here. We have so many mice. Don't hate me. 
there's so much stuff up there. Honestly, y'all, I don't want to go up there. I'm tired. It's been a long day. I'm not doing it. So, and that, it's honestly, it's fine. It's fine. But I'm going to wipe down these, put down the ground, because there's a lot of, like, gunk. And then we're just going to put everything back. All right, so, hopefully, let the dry soon, and then we can wipe down everything and just put everything back. But what else has been happening with me? What else are like, what else am I loving at the moment? I keep singing like the same songs over and over again. I keep singing, times are hard for dreamers. They say times are hard for dreamers, but they won't be hard for me. I've saved up everything I know. I just love that song. The melody of it is just You know what I don't miss about theater and auditioning right now? I don't miss audition season. Now hear me out. I do miss getting work. Around this time last year, I was in the thick of it with Cabaret and it was amazing. And I was lucky enough that for the first time ever in my life, I feel like I didn't have to go to too many auditions before I booked a job. But... I mean, Cabaret was really the last big show I've done. The last, like... Rehearsal, going into tech type process I've done, and that was almost a year ago. Like, whoa! But I don't miss auditions. Now, it's not because I was hating auditions. I was actually starting to get really good at it and I was actually starting to like feel myself and like be resilient and I've learned even more tactics of how to like be resilient in auditions thanks to my girl Emily and a course that I can't wait to tell you about one day. Um, but, you know, I don't miss sitting on the ground on 8th Avenue for two hours in the cold. I don't miss having to explain to people who are passing by that, that no, this isn't a line for a sample sale, you crazy person. This is a line for me to achieve my dreams. <laughs> Among thousands of others. Like, I don't know if anyone watching this auditions in New York, Nanek, with you girl Emily over here but there was one audition that I I think I filmed some type of Instagram thing with but there were it was for Freaky Friday and hairspray and it was like hundreds of girls lined up on the sidewalk fire hazards Fire, fire hazards were created that day. All for like three roles that some of us may get. And the worst part about it is, is that in all reality, those roles, number one, the shows never happened. So it just kind of makes you go, what was it all for? But I don't even remember the, the show, like the houses that it was for. Like, I don't even remember the theaters. But I really hope that quarantine like I was saying at the beginning of the video I really really hope that aud the audition system is something that the higher-ups in the theater community and the casting process are looking into because it's not working it's archaic there's too many especially women there's too many of us it's not safe we're getting up at ungodly hours and how are we even supposed to think that we can get a job for the show of our dreams when we've gotten up at like four in the morning and waited around, sat in the, the cold and, and it, I, 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 I mean, I'll do it because that's part of the gig. Like you got to pay your dues, but there's a point where it's just like, okay, like there's nothing left in my wallet. Like I don't even know what to pay with anymore. I can't pay with anything else. I've already paid with my dignity. I've already paid with my, my soul. What else do you need? So I'm really hoping that that shifts around. I mean, some some theaters are doing it, we're always doing it really good, at least the past couple of years, where they would have online signups and the, that was your non-ec day, right? 
You had to be quick. You had to be quick to the punch. But even like equity is online now to get your number, unless you're going on the alternate list. It's the next day. This was a huge project and I thought I could tackle it in one day. Um, so today we're just gonna tackle the bedroom. Organized dust, I just kinda left that to its own entity. And then the fridge. And number 10, I'm done cleaning, the big to clean. And then obviously I'll probably have to sweep and dust for dog hair tomorrow, because that's my life. Every other day I have to sweep this place for dog hair. Another podcast I listen to lately that's an awesome resource for learning and unlearning everything there is about diversity and inclusion and equity and anti-racism is That's Not How That Works with Trudy and Weez. Crap, I don't know their last names, but um, they call themselves the Jedi Masters. Jedi as in justice, equity, diversion, and inclusion. They're educators. They're... They're activists, they're incredible humans that really take the time and help, help the world be a better place through their knowledge, through their experience. Um, they, create, they have created programs and coaching in the past for people who are not black to uh, learn about inclusion and learn about equity and how to implement it into their lives and what the experience on the other end is like and it's good it's a lot of like oh okay didn't know that didn't think about that in that way so let's retrace let's retrack and let's start again so that's a great podcast and what their episode um that ended their second season was is called the um, summer, summer Syllabus Final. And they basically just give you a rundown of all the episodes that are they think are probably most important at this time. If you are tr really on this journey to anti-racism and, and really learning it and trying to understand your place and, and what lane you're in to um, the movement. So I'm working through that syllabus myself, but um, yeah, it's a great rundown of like definitions, understanding, resources, and and how to just like get your mind around everything because it is a lot of information if you are only just, are if you have had that privilege in your life where this is the only time that you've really had to start thinking about it and uh, implementing it into your life. So that's a great podcast to listen to and they they don't hold back, which is great. I do love that. A podcast that I really love... <laughs> really really love it's called ask rana with rana glickman and and brian safi and if you know rana glickman she just gives the best sage advice um a woman playing an incredible character could ever give you okay wait i just have to look at this fridge right for a second So, I have just finished my laundry. I'm going to fold it. And then I've got my therapy session at 3.30 and then I'll finish the bedroom. So let's see if we can get all this laundry folded before my session. Brian Safi is, has, is one of my favorite people in the podcasting world and inter internet world. His humor just, gives me life and then Rana is is just wonderful like excuse me like she's just excuse me if you watch if you listen to the show at all you'll know that and it's chef's kiss Mwah. such a great podcast such a great listen another podcast that Brian Safi is on aside from throwing shade which is one of my all-time favorite podcasts but another off-brand of throwing shade is him and Aaron Gibson doing groceries and they've only just started to bring their groceries podcast into the free feed on their throwing shade. It's like every other week a new episode comes out. But honestly, all they're doing is just going to different grocery stores and judging them. They went to an Aldi's, they've gone to a Wegmans, they're going to Whole Foods, they're going to farmer's markets. It's, it's the most low stakes type of podcast that we all need. Do we deserve it? Probably not. Do we need it? Absolutely. It's just 
that all in one beautiful, beautiful podcast. So if you need like the Mamma Mia, here we go again of the podcasting world, definitely check out groceries. I have changed again because it's so hot out, but we're gonna finish this room. I just finally finished putting away all the laundry. Just have to put some stuff on the bed. And we're gonna finish this room. It's gonna be time lapse, I'm sure, but like we're gonna finish this room right now. All right, friends, we are nearing the end of the video. I don't know how I've edited this voiceover and I don't know what else to talk about anymore to be perfectly honest. So I just wanna thank you for being here. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for subscribing and always supporting this channel. Thank you for listening to me rant. Thank you for listening to me rave. Thank you for being you and and being cool with the fact that clearly the Forever Theater Kid home is evolving a little bit during this time and there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just also trying to figure out like how to keep things um, cohesive yet also work for me and my mental health and how to keep the content fresh for myself so that I do always want to keep bringing more to you. I've thought about making a vlog channel where kind of all this home decor lifestyle stuff would go and then everything that's just straight up theater related would be on this channel but I don't know. I don't know what would work best. Is that something that you would want? Would you want like a regular a vlog channel where that type of content like stuff like this comes out where we're just kind of chatting and being pals and not just informative maybe that might be something that will happen i mean who knows how much longer we're going to be in this freaking quarantine so that might happen at this point Daisy, I just cleaned that. <sighs> oh, how can I be mad at that face? You're literally so cute. Mm. <sighs> I'm done, I'll show you now. But the kitchen's already a mess because life. <laughs> but alas, we are at the end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I hope it just helped you recharge. Get back out there, get back to the fight, no matter, no matter what way that is. If you're like me and you're creating content and you're trying to create stuff to make people happy and you have to realize that that might be all you can do right now while you're doing your own inner work, that's enough. If your way is going out and protesting peacefully, making your voice heard, that's enough. If you're reading every book you can get your hands on, that's enough. As long as you're doing something that's actively engaging your mind to help your fellow human, that's enough. You're enough. You are worthy. You are freaking valued. You are loved. You are safe here. And I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything and i'll see you in my next video which is right up in this corner over here so thank you so much i love you and i'll see you on the next one bye friends